everyone, welcome back. I'm Nikki Singh and I'm from Jets Education. And in this particular video lesson, I would like to talk about common mistakes students make during their speaking exam. So there's three parts to your speaking exam, part one, part two, and part three. So we're going to go over part one first, and then part two, and then eventually we'll move on to part three. So in part one, um, the first point that I would like to bring up is don't make things up, okay? So when the examiner asks you a question, if you don't know the answer, you can simply say, I'm terribly sorry, I don't know the answer to that question. Perhaps the examiner will ask you, does your name have any special meaning? Now that has happened before when I've been speaking with students and they're new. I'll ask them what their full name is, and does their name have any special meaning? Now, many of the students don't know what their name means. And in some cases, perhaps there is no meaning. So I'll give them a little task, a bit of homework, and ask them to go home and Google what their name means. And then the next day when they return, surprise, surprise, they actually do know what their name means. But if you are in a speaking exam and you don't know what your name is, don't make it up. Just saying, I'm sorry, I don't know if my name has any special meaning. Okay, so don't make up things. Be honest. There is no reason why you can't be honest. They're not going to give you a lower band score if you don't know, but it doesn't sound good when you're not honest. So point one, don't make things up. Be honest, all right? So when answering questions about yourself, be honest, all right? The same as part one. Don't make things up, be honest. So when the examiner asks you a question and you don't know what the answer is, just simply say, I'm terribly sorry, I don't know what the answer to that is, but you know, I'll find that out in the future. Just be natural, be natural. It's about you, it's about yourself. It's not neither wrong or neither right. So it's just about you. So just be honest, okay? Don't overthink your answers. Let them flow naturally. So if someone asks me a question, what is your name? I could say, my name is Nikki. Now, if they say, do you know what the meaning of your name is? Actually, I do know what the name of, uh, meaning of my name is. It means victory of the people. Now that's something that I've known since I was a little girl. So I actually looked that up myself. I wanted to know what the meaning of my name was. It means victory of the people. But if I didn't, I could just say, look, I honestly don't know uh, what the meaning of my name is. So yes, don't overthink your answers, let them flow. So if you don't know, just simply say, I don't know, and just let the answer flow. Let it be natural. Don't force it, because when you force your speech, you're tense and you're not calm and things start unraveling really, really quickly. All right, so be natural. Don't make things up, okay? And when someone, when the examiner asks you questions about yourself, let it flow naturally. Give honest answers. All right, now focus on the structure of your sentences, all right? Don't overextend them. So when you're asked a question from the examiner, Focus on sentence structure. Don't give too much information because quite often the next question can be quite similar to the previous one that they asked you and then you've got nothing left to give them for the next answer. So, you know, just be mindful. Don't overextend on your answers. Be clear and be precise. Don't ramble on too much. Don't give a whole paragraph. You can give some simple sentences in part one. That's quite fine. If it requires a more complex answer, yeah, sure, you can give a more complex answer, but don't overextend, all right? And focus on this structure. That is something that I work with students here and the teachers work with, sentence structure, all right? Making sure that your sentence is structured correctly so that you get the best possible high school a high score, a band score that you can. Okay, so that is our mission here at Jets Education. All right, pay attention to grammatical mistakes, all right, such as plurals 
and past tenses. Now these are very important. So I notice that a lot of the students here will say peoples. So, and I'll say, you mean people, and they'll say yes. So they all do seem to know that a person is one, a person, more than one person is people, not peoples, people. So be careful, don't make simple mistakes because those simple mistakes may cost you a lesser band score. All right, and then look at your tenses as well. So past tenses. So today, tomorrow, next week. Make sure that those grammatic, grammatical um, mistakes are eliminated the best that you possibly can. All right, because you just get one chance at that exam. So you really want to be as spot on as, as possible. Okay, so that's part one. So these are common mistakes that many students, not one or two, many students make during their speaking exams. All right, so be honest, all right? Answer the questions about yourself honestly. Don't make them up, you don't have to make them up. They're just about you, all right? Concentrate and focus on the structure of your sentences. Don't over answer them. Give quite simple complex answers in part one. Okay, if it requires a bit, a bit of an extended answer, fine, you can do that. But don't overdo it, all right? And pay attention to grammatical mistakes such as plurals and past tenses. So they're the things that I noticed in part one, okay? So let's move on to part two. So part two is the cue card of your speaking exam. So here are some things that I notice that many students do in part two. Don't be overly rigid. Let your speech flow, okay? You don't need to follow each and every bullet point, all right? So let your, your speech flow. Be natural, all right? Which brings us to the second uh, point here. Every, you don't have to answer each and every bullet point. So those bullet points that you write down are just a guide okay just in case you forget what you're saying you can refer back to those bullet points but it is not absolutely essential that you answer each and every one of those bullet points if you lose your way sure refer back to them but if you think of something else just let it flow don't force it okay so don't be overly rigid don't stick to it you're not in the army you don't have to do exactly what it says on the paper you don't have to answer that put that first bullet point then the next one then the next one no you don't they're just a guide all right so if you do lose your weight you can come back to those those bullet points and pick back up again so don't be overly rigid let your speech flow don't feel that you have to answer every single bullet point because you don't you might think of something better than what you actually originally wrote down. All right, moving on to the next point. You can stray off the topic slightly. However, it should relate to the topic. It should be relatable to the topic. So if you're speaking about something and you kind of forgot what it was about, but you sort of remember, yes, you can stray off the topic ever so slightly. However, try not to go completely off the topic. And in another video, I will teach you how to talk about a topic even if you don't know anything about that topic at all. So that's a real skill set that will be beneficial to you. So that's an up and coming video, um, a lesson that I will do with you and I will teach you, okay? When you don't know something about a topic that you've been asked how can I speak about this topic? I've never done that before. I've never experienced that before. I don't know anything about that. I guarantee you, you can give me topic, any topic, and I can speak about it forever, even if I don't know about it, because I can relate it to something else. So that's for another video. All right, next one. Try not to cram too much information into that two to three minute time frame. This is a big no-no. This is something I see students do all the time. As soon as that timer goes on, they're like a horse out of a gate. They will say as much as they can for those two minutes. They will cram every single thing into that two minutes. And that is the biggest mistake you can make. 
So when I ask students, why do you do that? Why do you cram all that information like that? Their response is, that's how they've been taught here in India, to cram, cram, cram. Well, let me assure you, in Australia, we are never, ever taught to cram. In fact, we're taught the complete opposite. Quality over quantity. Quality words, quality sentences, quality paragraphs over cramming. Because when you cram, 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 it's not natural. It is not how a native English speaker will talk, okay? So please, I beg you, do not cram everything into that two to three minutes. It won't get you a higher band score, I promise you. You will get a lower band score because that's not what part two is about. I promise you, you'll get to answer all of your bullet points if you have better sentence structure. Okay, now I'll talk about that another day. I'm quite passionate about that particular point. All right, now last one. Don't be rigid. Let your words flow naturally. Be natural. Don't be speaking on the top of your voice or talking quiet like a mouse or rigid or like a robot. Be natural. Let your words and sentences flow because that's how native English speakers talk. We don't cram everything. We don't talk in a rigid manner or stressed out manner. We don't. We just speak naturally. When we're speaking with our family and friends, we just speak naturally, even with our teachers. So please, don't be rigid with your words. Let them flow naturally. Okay, so that's part one and part two. And now we're going to do part three. Okay, moving on to part three of your English speaking exam. Common mistakes that many students make. All right, part three. The first one is developing your answers. Okay, although many students are good at grammar, they don't develop their answers enough. So in part three, this is your time to show off a little bit. To show off that you know and you understand, okay, simple sentences and more complex sentences. So this is when you can develop your answers some more. Unlike part one, I suggest that you keep your sentences a little bit simple. Don't overextend on them. But in part three, this is where the examiner is really going to test you. They're going to see how far they can push your English. So if you're speaking quite well and you've got great sentences going there, some simple, some complex, um, they are going to say, okay, this person's speaking really well. So I'm going to push them, perhaps ask them some additional questions uh, to the existing questions that they have. So look at developing your answers, all right? Um, make sure that you develop them enough. Give more detail. Use adjectives and use um, your verbs. So doing words and describing words. Describe in those sentences how things felt or how they didn't feel or what you were doing or didn't do or what the situ situation entailed at the time. Develop your answers. Give longer answers. Don't give paragraphs. That's a mistake. But use more complex sentences with joining words. Okay? So that's point one in part three. Part two. Think about answering questions by first making a statement and then backing it up with examples. Now this is something that we teach here at Jets Education, myself and the teachers. So first of all, we get you to make a statement and then you can give a couple of examples and then use the word and and then give a third example. Or perhaps you'll give one example, use the word and to connect and then a second example. If you can't think of three examples, you could give two. Now this is something that I teach the students from day one, from the day that they arrive. How to make sentences, how to structure your sentences. A lot of students struggle. How do I start this sentence? What do I say next? And then how do I finish? How do I conclude? So I give them a formula. It works each and every time and you can apply it 
to any subject, to any topic. That video is for another day because I can do a complete video on that alone. It is fool's proof, I promise you. And it's simple. Once you know the strategy, the format of it, you can apply it to anything. All right, so make sure that you make a statement and you back it up with examples. Just don't make empty statements and leave it up in the air. Follow it through. Okay, point number three. Follow up with your answers with detailed factual information and examples. Okay, it's pretty much like telling a story. So when you sit um, and have your speaking exam, you need to wow your examiner. You need to present a story to them. Now, I'm not saying make up information that's not true. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying you do have to impress them with information, factual information and examples. Okay, so let me give you an example off the top of my head. Okay, Johnny really likes to eat candy because the candy is sweet, it tastes delicious, and he likes to share it with his friends. All right, so I provided you with three factual answers, three factual um, examples, should I say. All right, let's give you, I'll give you another example. I really like doing these lessons because I get to help people, all right? They learn something new, and it makes me feel good that I'm helping other people. So that is a complete sentence, and you can apply that strategy to absolutely any question whatsoever. It's that simple. So if you are struggling with your English speaking portion of IELTS, perhaps you're studying somewhere else at another IELTS center, and you're struggling, you're not getting the attention that you need, you're not understanding what do I do, how do I start that sentence, what's the middle portion of it, and how do I conclude the sentence? It's easy. Come to Jets Education. I can teach you straight away. So can the teachers. We all know what to do here. It's simple. You will learn that within the first few days. And then once you learn that strategy, you can apply it to absolutely everything. And that, that my friends, is how you score a better, higher band score. Alrighty, let's have a look here. Last point, number four. Also, you can elaborate by using various types of words, such as synonyms, okay? Um, and don't you overuse words, all right? So I'm going to go into this a little bit closer, but there are two words here that I hear all the time, moreover and boon. Now, I've never heard of the word boon before, ever in my life boon but i've recently found out i think it's a cultural thing that perhaps is used here in india it means something good so um in australia we never use the word boon perhaps they do in other english speaking countries around the world, but i've never heard of the word boon we would never use that term now moreover i can think of so many other words so i have a rule my students are not allowed to use the word moreover more than once in a sentence there are so many other words you can use. However, having said that, also, there are so many other words that you can use except for moreover. Using repetitious words over and over again is not good. That is not how you elevate your English and get a better, a higher band score. It's not how it works. So here at Jets Education, we'll teach you better synonyms. So I also hear the word too much or too big. So we're looking for better synonyms, all right? So I did a video the other day on synonyms for happy. So if you can find that video, watch that video. There are better words that you can use than too much. So if, if something is too much, perhaps you have too much, um, so you have a lot of friends. Perhaps you have too much food. So you have an abundance of food. There are better words, better synonyms that you can use. And that's how you go from getting a 5 or 4.55 to a 7 
to an eight. How you do it is you elevate your words, you extend your English vocabulary. Once again, it's really not very hard. You just need people who care, people who care about you and your learning journey. And that's what we do here at Jets Education. We care about your learning journey. I do, our teachers do. All right, so that's it for part three. So we've covered part one, part two, and part three. Common mistakes many students make during their speaking exam. All right, that's not all of them. There are many, many more, but these are just some, these are just a few. And these are things that we can go through with you and correct them and put you onto the right path to achieving the highest band score you possibly can achieve. Okay, lovely people. Well, that's it for this particular video. If you enjoyed my video, can you give me a thumbs up? I'd really appreciate it. And can you share it with your friends? I really want to help as many people here in India as possible. You can also subscribe. Jets Education is on Facebook. Jets Education is on Instagram. We also have a website, www.jetseducation.com. Or you can leave a comment in the box below. Anything, you can say anything at all. You can find out about our fee structure. Um, you can find out anything you like. Anything to do with the speaking exam, part one, part two, part three. It could be anything else relating to the college here. So that's it for this video. I'll see you again in the next video. Take care.